welcome to the session on speeding up Rust linting using database tricks. My name is Predra Grefsky, and I firmly believe everything can be a database. I'm the author of the Rust linter Cargo Samver Checks, as well as the Trustfault query engine that powers it. The problem we're solving today is that dependency upgrades aren't fearless yet. Rust's package manager Cargo assumes that all libraries always adhere to semantic versioning. When this assumption is violated, the consequences can be painful. Users' builds are broken, and maintainers have to scramble to publish fixes. Fortunately, this works well most of the time. However, more than 1 in 6 of the top 1,000 Rust crates have violated Samver at least once. The causes of this are complex, and human error is not one of them. If you'd like to learn more, you can check out the blog post at the link at the bottom of the slide. Cargo Samver Checks is a linter that prevents accidental breaking changes. It's designed to run right before publishing a new version, at which point it scans the public API to compare it against the previous version's API, flagging any changes that are not in line with the intended version bump. It's gotten a fair bit of community adoption, and the Cargo team hopes to merge it into Cargo itself. The initial version of Cargo Samver Checks was published a little over a year ago, and it was not the fastest. It's runtime scaled as O of n squared with library size. Fortunately, most libraries are small, so this wasn't a huge performance problem. Over time, it started being adopted in some bigger libraries as well. It added about an extra minute to their publish pipeline, but this was worth it because they were also at higher risk of accidental breaking changes. Unfortunately, n squared is the sweet spot of poorly scaling algorithms. It's fast enough to make it to production and slow enough to cause a problem once it gets there. Predictably, it did cause a problem. At one point, the team working on the AWS SDK for Rust attempted to use Cargo Samver Checks, at which point they found that it took more than five hours to Samver Check their crate. This was, of course, unacceptable and not useful. The optimizations I'm going to describe in this talk allowed us to take those five hours and turn them into 7.7 .7 seconds, more than 2300 times faster. And the benefit wasn't limited to gigantic crates. Smaller libraries saw improvements as well. Instead of adding an extra minute to the published pipelines, now we can Samver check most of them in well under one second. In the rest of this talk, I'd like to convince you that Samver linting is just database querying in disguise. And then I'd like to show you how we can use an API to optimize those database queries. Let's use a simple example. Say we remove a public function from a library's API. This is, of course, a breaking change, and if we run Cargo Samver Checks, it will helpfully point that out. It says that a publicly visible function is no longer importable by its prior path, and it gives us the name of the function and its previous location in our source code. The way this is implemented under the hood is via query. We look for functions that existed in the previous version of the API but no longer exist in the new version. If we represented this as a diagram, it would look something like this. We have a pair of versions that we're considering, and for each function in the old version, we look up its importable path, then attempt to match it to a function in the new version but at the same path. If no such function exists, then we found our breaking change. A naive execution of this query would be n squared. It would consider all pairs of functions between the old version and the new version of the code. We have n functions on the left and n functions on the right, and an O of 1 check to see if their paths are a match. This is how the initial version of Cargo Samver Checks worked. Our goal here is to implement an optimization called Predicate Pushdown, which looks just like adding a database index. Given that we're looking for a specific function by path, we can look up the corresponding function in the new version in O of 1 using an index. We're going to do this n times across each of the functions in the old version, so the total runtime here would be O of n. The entire 2300 times speedup is just three instances of predicate pushdown across the various queries in Cargo Samver Checks. So if all we're doing is adding some indexes, what's the challenge here? It turns out that handling Samver in a way that doesn't cause false positives everywhere requires seeing like a compiler because we have to solve for could the new code possibly work? For example, say a method got removed from some type. It's possible this isn't a breaking change. For example, the method might have moved to a trait that that type also implements. Correctly handling this case requires compiler-like logic. We have to implement algorithms like trait resolution, name resolution, and so on. And that makes SQL not a great fit. Even if we ran a complex ETL pipeline, 
the size of the resulting tables would mean that all hope of good performance goes out the window. At the same time, declarative queries are a necessity. The best data source we have is called Rust Doc. It's a tool that comes with Rust that allows us to get machine readable representations of library APIs. Unfortunately, its format is unstable. It has breaking changes in more or less every Rust release every six weeks. We have to make sure we don't have to rewrite every query for every new version of Rust Doc, because that sounds like a recipe for maintainer burnout. It's entirely unsustainable. In an ideal world, we'd have declarative queries over a fixed data model. Instead of writing them to load data from a specific JSON path that might change every six weeks, we would write them to do things like look up functions by name, which is the same thing no matter which Rust version we're using. If we were to draw an architecture diagram, it would look something like this. We have our linter at the top and all the different formats we need to support on the bottom. In between, there is a layer that connects the two. We'll wrap all the formats we need to support in little pieces of code called adapters, which understand all of the format-specific logic needed to extract the data we need. All of our linting business logic is represented as queries that describe the kinds of breaking changes we're looking for. And in between, we have a query engine that knows how to turn those queries into requests for data the adapters know how to look up. The query engine we're using is called Trustfall, and it's a little bit unusual. If you've used Postgres or SQLite, you might have heard the terms foreign data wrappers or virtual tables. These are ways for the databases to query data that is stored outside of their storage system. Unfortunately, this feature is a secondary focus for these databases, which means that it's often limited in the capabilities that it has and the kinds of optimizations it can perform. Foreign data is a primary focus of Trustfall. Its idea is to represent data as a virtual graph where vertices have properties and edges whose data might come from any kind of data source. That allows it to have an expressive query language over all kinds of data sources that are not traditionally considered databases, such as REST APIs or collections of files on S3. The ideas behind Trustfall have been heavily battle-tested in production over seven years across a variety of different data sources. The engine is written in Rust, and the adapters can be written in Rust, Python, JavaScript, or WebAssembly. If you'd like to learn more about Trustfall itself, check out my talk called How to Query Almost Everything. You can also head over to our web playgrounds where you can try running Trustfall queries over the Hacker News REST API or the APIs of a variety of Rust crates. Okay, we can query the database. How do we optimize? Let's take a look at how Trustfall's optimizations API allows us to do optimizations like predicate pushdown. We can split query optimizations into two categories. The first is optimizations that are independent of the data source. These are things like lazy evaluation. We don't have to worry about these too much because Trustfall applies them automatically. They're always on. The second kind is optimizations that are more situational. They're dependent on the underlying data source. They're things like caching, batching, and predicate pushdown. And they have to be implemented by the adapter based on information provided by Trustfall's optimization API. We're trying to implement predicate pushdown, so that's the kind of optimization we'll be looking at. Let's look at a few examples. We'll start with something simple, and we'll work our way up to the full predicate pushdown optimization that is in cargo server checks. Let's first look up all functions and their paths in the crate. As a diagram, it would look something like this. We start with the crate, we look up all the functions contained within, and for each function, we look up its importable path. In Trustfall syntax, it looks something like this. We start with the crate. We look at all the items in the crate, which includes functions, structs, enums, and so on. We filter down to only functions, discarding everything else. We look up the importable path, of which there might be zero, one, or more than one. We output the path property. And if we felt like adding any more query clauses, we could put them between any pair of curly braces here. OK, that's the query sorted out. Let's look at the adapter. We'll specifically look at the code for loading the items in the given crate. The adapter might have a function like resolve crate items, which takes two parameters, the vertex that represents the crate whose data we're loading and a hints value that represents the optimization API. We're gonna come back to that in a minute. The exact details of the Rust doc format are not relevant here, so let's assume we already have a function that loads all of the items given a crate. Even though a query is returning only functions, it's safe to return all kinds of items here. 
Applying filters is Trustful's responsibility, so it will take care to discard everything that isn't a function. Now that we got that working, let's try looking for a function at a specific import path. To do this, we just add a filter directive to our query that says that the path property must be equal to this query parameter called path. Because the query parameter is fixed at query time, we can use an index lookup to speed this up. But it turns out that building an API that supports this well is pretty hard to do. That API has multiple objectives that are in tension with each other. We want it to have a high ceiling so that any optimization can be built. But we also want it to have a low barrier to entry so that optimizations are easy and it doesn't require a PhD to build one. We also want this API to be very stable. We want to be able to continue evolving Trustfall without breaking everyone's optimizations. At this point, one might say, why not just expose Trustfall's internal query representation? But as it turns out, just ends up being a load-bearing word here. Let's take a look at something similar that happened in the Go ecosystem a few months ago. A user requested that the compiler team stabilize their internal representation. Unfortunately, that intermediate representation changes often and is what allows the Go compiler to continue evolving over time. Exposing and stabilizing these internals would be a serious hindrance to the team's efforts, so they decided to reject this proposal as infeasible. The same would be true of Trustfall. So instead, we decided to take a different approach. We decided to build an optimization API that allows adapters to ask structured questions about the behavior of the query they are currently executing. These are questions like, is the importable path edge used at this location in the query? Or, is the path property required to have a specific value here? This satisfies all three of our objectives. It covers all of the optimizations that we could think of, it allows optimizations to reuse Trustfall's machinery instead of rolling their own. And it allows us to not expose our internals, which means that they can continue to change freely without breaking everyone's optimizations. But let's get back to the query that loads functions at a specific importable path and use this optimizations API to apply predicate pushdown. This is the code we wrote previously, and it's still correct. Remember, applying the filter is Trustfall's job. However, it is slow. It will take O of n to look up the function at that path. Let's say that we have an index over importable paths. Let's check if we can apply it. To apply the index, we need to check if the importable path edge is being used by the query. And if so, we need to check if the path property has a value that is known at query time. If so, Trustful will give us candidate values for the path property, and we can use those candidates to apply an index lookup. With this implementation, the query can find the function we're looking for by applying the index in O of 1 instead of going through all of the items in O of n. Now we're ready to implement the full optimization that Cargo Semverchex uses. Let's look for functions that no longer exist at their prior path. As before, this is the diagram for that query. However, remember that applying filters is Trustfall's job, so we don't have to worry about the part where we say the function must not exist. Instead, we can simplify and just look for the functions that are at the same path as the one in the old crate. This case is a little bit trickier than before. Instead of the path being a single value known at query time, this time it's only known dynamically because it changes for every function that we check. Let's look at the code for the same edge one more time. This is the code we had before. It's still correct, but it is slower than necessary because it will fall back to using the slow path since it can't use the index at the moment. Let's fix that. We'll ask Trustfall if the path property has a dynamically known value. And if so, Trustfall will tell us that it can generate candidate values, but it might need to evaluate more of the query first. We'll tell it to go ahead and do that. And once we get the candidate values, we'll apply the index lookup as before. With this implementation, our query can once again use the index and look up the corresponding function in O of 1 instead of scanning through all of the functions in O of n. And with that success, we've implemented predicate pushdown. This semverlint now runs in O of n instead of O of n squared. And most importantly, this was entirely done using a stable API. We never needed to access any trustful internals that might break as trustful evolves. So what does optimizing like this buy us? It buys us a few obvious things, like better user experience, lower energy use, and support for larger use cases like giant code bases or research of semver compliance across a wide range of crates. But it also buys us something non-obvious. It allows us to proactively look for bugs in our implementation. As part of our Semver study, 
we scanned more than 14,000 crate releases, and in the process found more than a dozen bugs in cargo sample checks. In a sense, performance made it cheap to find our own bugs before our users found them. In the big picture, there are two takeaways here. The first one is that many workloads are just database querying in disguise. With Trustfall, anything can be a database, and we can have declarative querying over any kind of data source. Our business logic should not be tied to our optimizations, and that will allow us to have more robust, more flexible, more performant code. The second is that we don't have to pick between flexibility or performance. We can have both at the same time. Foreign data wrappers can be quite fast if we designed for that from day one. And having access to good optimization APIs means that we have precise control over the execution of our declarative queries. I believe this is an underexplored design space, so stay tuned. You can follow me on social media, and I also have a blog you might want to check out. Please play around with the Trustfall query engine and let me know what you think. Happy querying!